And this, to be honest, is the simplest one in the book. Providing you don't actually set the cooker on fire, it can't go wrong. Much, much, much later. Oh, my whole kitchen's filled with smoke. <laughs> Hello viewers, I'm James May and I still can't cook very well, but I can do it better than Lucy Brown, who's a complete teenager. She doesn't like cheese, she doesn't like wine, she doesn't like all sorts of things. So I've given her a recipe from my new book, which is the dal and the chapatis with which to eat it. It's dead simple. Lucy Brown is here now. Hello Lucy Brown, welcome to Can't Cook. Hi James. So are you ready to make coconut dal with lentils and then some chapatis with which to scoop it up? Not particularly. I've never made anything like this before, so I'm a bit worried about it. It's a one pot deal. You chuck everything in the pan and cook it and then you season it a bit. And whilst it's cooking, you can make some chapatis, which is pretty much the simplest form of bread you can make. It's unleavened. It's just some flour and oil and water rolled out and chucked in a hot pan. So if it's all done in one pot and it's the simplest bread thing ever to make it's even worse if i get it wrong yes if you get it wrong you'll have to well you'll have to fire yourself as you're pretty much the boss of food tribe these days but anyway you know the ingredients yep you sent me a nice pdf yep lentils and coconut milk and all that stuff have you got them and have you prepared them i have pre-prepared them and put them in nice little bowls because i'm very organized excellent right the first thing you have to do is rinse the lentils do you know how to do that i can't say that i do no right do you have a large pan like the sort of big pan that you would maybe boil pasta in okay so put the lentils in there right put some water in to cover them so sort of an inch or an inch or two above the lentils cold water yeah now if you swirl your hand around in the lentils in the water quite vigorously you'll see the water starts to go a bit cloudy Yep. Keep doing that for like 15, 20 seconds until the water looks really cloudy. Strain the lentils through a strainer and repeat that process until when you swirl them around, the water remains clear. How many times do you think that will take? Uh, well, it depends on the type of lentils, but it could be two times, it could be four or five times. The point is to keep going until the water's clear or as near as damn it. And you can be pretty vigorous about it. Don't be mimsy. You know, get your hand in there and give them a good swish about. This might sound stupid, but are lentils normally bright orange? Or is this a specific type of lentil? Uh, you can get sort of orangey ones, red ones, green ones, brown ones. I think there's even a very rare sort of grey coloured one. I've only ever had dark green lentils. Yeah, I think the dark green ones are more common than the red ones. The red ones are sort of posh lentils, which would suit you because you are posh, as we know. Well, I grew up in France at school where everyone had lentils and they'd put vinegar on them. Yes. Well, that's because the French are very strange about things like lentils. OK, I have my lentils in a saucepan with no water currently. OK, now put all the other ingredients in except the lemon juice and the coriander leaves. What made you put this recipe in your book? Well, because the book is called 60 Recipes That Any Idiot Can Make. And this, to be honest, is the simplest one in the book. Providing you don't actually set the cooker on fire, it can't go wrong. Even if you leave it simmering for half a day, it would still be good. Do I put the whole can of coconut milk in? Mm-hmm. 400 ml? I think so, yeah, 400 ml. Hot curry powder. Sprinkle that around. Yep. You need to put 300 millilitres of water. To do that, three quarters fill the coconut milk tin. Oh, clever. I had a little measuring thing ready. Three quarters fill that rough. It's not critical, Lucy, so don't worry. But that rinses out the spare bit of coconut milk that's stuck to the side, so you don't waste any. Three quarters fill it, swirl it about. I've never thought of doing that. Okay. Was it one teaspoon of salt? Well, I usually just put sort of a, a healthy, well, yeah, teaspoon we put in the recipe. Yeah, depends on what that'll do. How many curry leaves? Two should do it. Um, they're this big, is that normal? No, they're quite small. Put four in, they're really tiny. <laughs> Sorry, I guess Sainsbury's do small leaves. How many cinnamon sticks? 
that's more than enough. Actually, I would bre break that in half lengthways and just put a half in. Like that? Yeah, that's good. I'm slightly anti-cinnamon, so I always knock that one back when I make it. Okay, you can put the heat on. Okay, I've put it on six out of 10 or five out of 10. Honestly, nothing is that critical. I get it simmering so it's just sort of bubbling and going a bit, and then knock the heat back so that it just simmers. Okay, nothing's happening yet. You might want to put up one of those cards here that says a little later or something like that or a comedy sting. One eternity later. Have you got your ingredients ready for chapatis? You should have two types of flour, some oil and some water. Right, do you have a mixing bowl? Are you still alive? Yeah. Yep, good. Yeah. Right, put the flour in the bowl with the salt, both flours, just chuck it in. Plenty of it, flood the cowling. Move you to a side angle. So both flowers in? Yep. Just chuck it in. And the salt. How much salt was it? All of it. Um. A teaspoon. Mix it together, either with your fingers or with a fork or a little wooden spoon, anything like that, doesn't matter. Fork is good. Mixes it up well. Don't be don't what? Don't be mimsy with it. Just, you know, give it a... Turn the spoon so you turn it over on itself, you know, like you were mixing up cement and sand or whatever. I've actually mixed up cement and sand more than I've done this. <laughs> right, so you're now going to add the teaspoonful of oil. Okay. I usually drizzle it over the top. Roughly. Again, it's not important. But, I mean, it's double the whole bottle of it, but, it's, you know, it's not... So I just mix this? Yes. Doesn't feel like very much oil to make this into a dough. That didn't look like very much. You might put a bit more in, in a minute, but give it a good stir round and see what happens. Get right to the sides of the bowl and you get... Am I frustrating you yet? Go like that, round the bowl and then over. Yes. That's what I'm doing. You only went round about a third of the bowl. Go sort of two thirds of the way round. And then and turn it into the middle. So the, the action is like that, look. You go whoosh, whoosh. I never thought I was mixing wrong my whole life. Okay, this has changed to about the texture of breadcrumbs. Let's have a look. Very good. Okay, so now add the hot water a bit at a time and do that stirring thing that you've been doing to make sure it's all thoroughly mixed up. And you probably want to do this for a good five or six minutes. Okay. Good, vigorous, circular stirring and folding motion. I think I'm not adding enough water each time. I'm telling you all this as if I know what I'm doing. I've, do, I've done this a few times and it generally works. It will certainly be edible. I have to say this one is up there, A, because it's easy and B, because I was really surprised at how good it tasted the first time I did it. It tasted sort of restaurant grade. Oh, that's high standards for me. <laughs> You're stabbing it again, turn it... It's yes. getting quite hard to mix. When you wrote your book, did you put just about and almost and words like that for your ingredients and then the publisher correct it or...? No, but we did have an argument and eventually in the intro I explained that, you know, some things have to be reasonably precise like this. It's not absolutely critical, but it can be, you know, no more than about 5 or 10% out each way. But other things like garnishes and, you know, it's some coriander leaves. You know, you just put them on the top to make it look nice and add a bit of flavour. You know when it's right. You don't need to weigh it out or measure it. That's it's slightly too wet. You're right, but it'll be OK. So um, to have a quick look at your lentils, make sure they're not exploding. The foam seems to have calmed down. OK, just give it a bit of a stir, but, but be gentle with it because you don't want to smash up the lentils. How long has that been on? About 10 minutes, 12 minutes? About that. Did you check the time when it started? No. It's a good job I did. What time was it? Well, I don't know at what point it started bubbling, so let's call it 15 minutes. You've got another 15, 20 minutes to go. OK. Don't stir it too much, you'll bruise it. OK, back to the chapatis. Show me your mixture. Sticky is okay. Now oh, that's lovely. Right, you can put, if you've got your floured surface ready, clean, flat, floury surface, and you also need a rolling pin eventually. Yep, give me two seconds. I have my surface here, lovely and okay. clean. 
you're just making the surface dusty so that the bread doesn't stick to it, but you don't want too much, otherwise you will actually change the consistency of the... Okay, so your doughy mixture, get it out with your hands. It's quite stringy. Yeah, it'll be okay. Now, sort of pat it into a ball. You know, it's a bit, it is a bit like pastry. It's just stuck immediately you, to my hands. You sort of push it with the the heels of your hands, if you like, that bit. So sort of push it away from you. It's okay, don't worry, it'll... No, with your hands flat. Yeah. So that, like that. Give it a proper push away from you. And that was sunflower oil you put in there, not super glue or anything. Yes, it was sunflower oil. I'm home alone today, so I might make this later. I'm sure, I'm sure yours would be a much bigger success. Well, not necessarily. Like, I've been here for so long already. The sun is setting. I don't know if you can see it through the window. Yeah, I know. Right, does that feel like a ball of dough? It looks pretty much like one. Yeah, it's starting to feel a lot better. OK, you need to divide that up. You can make sort of eight quite big chapatis or ten more reasonable chapatis out of that. Right, with the ball you've got left, yeah. divide that into th three, I think. We'll make quite small ones. OK. OK. Yeah, form each piece into a, into a rough sphere. And then you need your floured rolling pin and roll each one out until it's about sort of four millimetres thick. You know, about the thickness of a nice piece of pita bread. And turn it a bit as you do it so that it remains roughly circular. Should I get a plate and put them on a plate? Well, you need, you need to have them near the cooker, really, because the next bit takes, takes place quite quickly. OK, I shall put them on a plate separated by a thin sheet of paper towel. Exactly. They are quite small, you're right. Well, that's good. I didn't want to make a big one in case it turns out to be absolute rubbish, because then you could maybe try and modify your dough. I don't, I'm not sure. It's beyond my capabilities now. I am only a beginner, remember. And I'm a full-on novice. OK, this one I'm going to try and make round. Failed. <laughs> That's our third one. OK, right, let's go and test the dial and see where it's up to. OK, I shall bring these with us. So try the dial. Oh, it's got a bit of a skin on it. Just give it a gentle stir. What, you've still got the heat on about, what, two, three? Two, yeah. So had the, had the lentils gone soft when you tried it? They're still a little bit sort of grainy. A little bit grainy is OK, but they weren't chewy. No. I'd say that was done then. It's difficult to tell without actually coming in and tasting it. Right, so now you need your frying pan. I'm going to move that to the rear ring so it's not in my way. OK. Non-stick frying pan. Uh, yes. Right, you've got your, you got your chapatis ready, yes? Yep. Right, the way you do this, it happens quite quickly, so I'll tell you in advance, is you put that pan on the heat, but don't put any oil in it. OK. And get it really hot, so you think dangerously hot, so a little bit of smoke is almost starting to come off it. And then when it's like that, you chuck the first chapati in, and you do it for something like half a minute aside, but you, what you've got to do is use your spatula to carefully lift it up and it's done when it's starting to go brown in places and the bubbles that form are starting to pop. You know how a, how a chapati has that sort of craters of the moon look to it? When it looks like that, flip it over and do it for about the same amount of time on the other side and then take it out, put it on your plate in the oven to stay warm. Yes, let me get my spatula. Each one should take about a minute. Oh, it's smoking now. OK, right, quickly, quickly, quickly. So I just pop it in. Yep. Did it make any noise? No. Um, it's got weird sort of, I don't know how to describe it, flowery nodules. I'll show it to you, should I? <laughs> you can't be wrong, this. It's so simple. Oh, they're starting to make bubbles. Mm. It's cooking. I know, but like... Because it sort of starts from one side and then changes colour. Have a look underneath. Just lift the corner up. Yep, I think it's flip time. OK, flip it. Let's have a look at the side that's up now. Yeah, that's more like it. This is the first one, so it's the ugliest. 
They smell more like pancakes than dough. Do they? No, they should smell like bread. No, more like pancakes. You definitely use the right flowers. Yes. Oh, my whole kitchen's filled with smoke. Right, as soon as you've put that one in the oven, you need to get your lemon and squeeze it out. Yep, whole half a lemon. Yep. Okay, I think this one's done. Yep, in the oven. In the oven, turn the ring off. Yep. Stir that lemon into the dal. Pip got through. Don't worry, won't kill you. Okay, so I just keep stirring this. Hello. Okay, stir that in and then you can sprinkle some coriander leaves on the top. Have a little pile of them, pull the leaves off. I've lost my coriander. You've what, you've lost it? Yeah. Oh, I might have forgot to get the coriander. Well, you're having it without coriander. I've then. got parsley. No, that's wrong. Unless this is coriander, let me check, because it's in a plant pot. No, it's parsley. Okay, never mind. It's not the end of the world. Okay, so take a chapati out of the oven. Yep. Now what? Terrace, <laughs> eat the dal with the chapati. <laughs> right, tear a strip off. You sort of tear that up into three strips. The dal is going to be boiling hot. Tear it into a strip and then you hold it in your hand sort of with your fingers and your thumb so that it curves, so that it's like a scoop. Yeah. You know, like you would with a piece of paper to stop it flopping. Yeah. Well, that'll do. And then, no, not like that. If you imagine this piece of paper, you put your fingers underneath it and your thumb on the top so that it's like that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And then now scoop up some dal and smash it in your face and tell me what it tastes like. It's going to burn my mouth off. Well, to, to hold it in the air for a bit. It... Look out, can you see how much steam is coming off here? Yeah, well, just, just hang on a bit. Is it... I'll try and cool it down. Look at that, look at the steam. It looks good, I think. Is it sort of, what colour is it? Is it sort of yellowy? It looks like if you blended a pumpkin. Yeah. Go on then, put it in your face. <laughs> it's so hot. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> Maybe ladle a bit into a small bowl and let it cool for a minute or two. <laughs> oh, I just burnt my mouth so badly. <sighs> oh, that's burnt for the next two days. Make your chapati spoon. Yep. And eat it. It's pretty good. Is it? Yeah. It's not What's as your... spicy as I thought it'd be. What's the bread like? Cardboard. Yeah. But sort of in a Moorish cardboard way. It shouldn't really be like cardboard. I think it's just our, our dough was a little bit suspect. There's too much cinnamon in it. Yeah, well, that's see, I don't like too much cinnamon. That's why I said split the piece of bark in half, but maybe you should have split it again. You only discover this by making it. But you know next time, a bit more curry powder, a bit less cinnamon, a bit more salt. And I think a bit less char on the chapati. But you are eating it. It's quite Moorish. So it's not bad, is it? No. And that's your first attempt, and your teacher doesn't really know what he's doing and is about 70 miles away. So I'd say that was a success. Not as bad as I thought it'd go. The dough was a bit of a struggle, though. Yeah, well, we need to work on that. Um, but when lockdown finishes, which it will do one glorious day, we could do this properly in the same kitchen, maybe yeah. even without masks on or social distancing or any of that nonsense. We could actually just have a nice time, me, you, Rachel, we could get Rachel along, maybe Mike Fernie to make some fatuous comments and we can make more dal and we could make a kima curry as well. 
we can make the whole Curry Night section from the book. That'd be great. Well, that was immensely enjoyable. Slightly annoying, actually, because it's very frustrating sitting here and not being able to interfere. And also, I've been through the whole process with you vicariously, but I can't eat it. This is why cooking programs are rubbish. You can't actually taste the food. Food is about smell and taste. The two things you don't get through television. But well done. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time to try and teach me. I've now got one recipe under my belt. Well, try it several times. By the third or fourth time, you'll have it spot on. And it's not yeah. difficult, is it? I mean, you can't really get that wrong. Unless you, you know, went out for the day and forgot that it was on the top of the cooker. Cool, do you want to end with some nice call to actions? Yeah, off you go then. Come on, you do them so well. No, I'd like to see you do one. Okay. With the symbols. With the symbols, okay. After this camera, yeah? Okay. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. Excellent. Now what? Terrace, ter <laughs> eat the dal with the jabati. <laughs> <Ter> <laughs> right, terrace strip off.